In genetics, we often use pedigree diagrams or charts to better visualize the inheritance of a gene within a family. They can help in determining if the trait is dominant, recessive, or sex-linked by seeing how it is inherited throughout the generations. First, let's learn what all these different symbols represent. A circle represents a female, and a square represents a male. If the shape is filled in, then the person has the trait being discussed. But if it's not filled in, then they are normal, without the trait. If there is a line between a circle and a square, then those people are married, or are a couple. Lines down from them show their children. Roman numerals are used to show the different generations and numbers to identify a person within the generation. Sometimes the numbers are implied and are not written out, but either way they go from left to right. This is helpful to talk about a person within the pedigree chart. For example, individual 2-3 has the trait in this pedigree chart. You might be shown a pedigree chart like this one and asked if it shows inheritance of an autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, or sex-linked gene. There are some common rules for each of these we should look at first to help us determine. Autosomal just means the gene is on a chromosome other than your X or Y, meaning it's not sex-linked. In autosomal dominant pedigrees, both parents can have the trait, but they can have children without the trait. This works because homozygous dominant as well as heterozygous genotypes are affected. For autosomal recessive pedigree charts, look for if neither parent has the trait but some of the children do, as heterozygous genotypes are not affected in these charts. Sex-linked genes can also be dominant or recessive. Sex-linked recessive shows primarily in males and can skip generations. These can be tricky to tell if it's sex-linked recessive or autosomal recessive. A sex-linked dominant trait is more frequent in a pedigree chart, and a male with the trait will pass it on to all of his daughters. Now, with these rules in mind, let's take a look at these four separate pedigree charts and determine the model of inheritance of each. Use each of these four methods only once. Pause the video if you want to try on your own first. This first pedigree chart shows parents with the trait, but not all of their children do. So this is dominant. If you look at 1-1, one, one, he is a male with the trait, but his daughter, 2-4, does not. Therefore, it must not be sex-linked. This pedigree is autosomal dominant. This next chart only affects males and seems to be skipping generations. I'm leaning towards sex-linked recessive, but it could be autosomal recessive and it's just a coincidence that no females have gotten the trait. Since every method should only be used once, I'm going to skip this pedigree chart for now. The third pedigree chart has parents without the trait, but their children do have it. The trait is also equally affecting males and females. It's looking like autosomal recessive. To be sure, take a closer look at 1-1 one, one and 2-2. Two, two. The mom has the trait, but the son does not. If this trait was sex-linked recessive, the son would have the trait. Since he does not, this is autosomal recessive, which also means the second pedigree chart is sex-linked recessive. Now, that only leaves one option for our last pedigree, but let's still take a closer look anyway. This trait is pretty common at every generation, 
and it seems to affect males and females. This should be sex link dominant, so let's see if all the daughters of men with the trait also have the trait. All the daughters do have the trait, and at a higher frequency than if the trait were autosomal dominant, so it must be sex link dominant. Taking a look at this pedigree chart, there is not much to go on. We can tell it's not dominant as the trait just popped up and the parents do not have it. But is it sex linked or autosomal? Sometimes pedigrees will show carriers of a trait by using hash marks. This represents heterozygous genotypes when looking at a recessive trait. These individuals do not have the trait, but they carry an allele that can pass on to their children or grandchildren. Filling in the hash marks for carriers shows us more about this trait. Looking at who is a carrier for this trait, you see males and females can be carriers. Males cannot be carriers of sex-linked genes as they cannot be heterozygous. They only have one of each sex chromosome. By looking at the carriers, we can now tell this is a autosomal recessive trait. Pedigree charts can also be used for genetic cross questions. For example, using this same pedigree chart, what are the chances 2, 3, and 2, 4 will have a child with the trait. From the pedigree, we know 2-3 is homozygous recessive and 2-4 is homozygous dominant from how they're drawn on the chart. Put those into a Punnett square and we see none of their children will have the trait. All of their children will be carriers of this trait so they will be drawn on the pedigree chart with hash marks.